Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, on Patreon today, we have released the solution videos to the PBN Institute, the Paint by Numbers Institute, Japanese sums puzzle packs from the June monthly reward for Patreon. So if you are a $2 patron, you can have played the puzzles. You will have got the um, you will have got access to those brilliant puzzle packs, loads and loads of puzzles by Panthera, the Asylum and Grupples. And if you're a $3 patron, you can now view the solution videos to any of them that you struggled with or just to find what the constructors approach to them was. I mean, I think it's often very helpful to see how the constructor found a puzzle. So that is why we have the two tiers of membership um, and the $3 patrons get um, solution videos when they exist to, to the monthly reward puzzles. And I mean, there are loads of them. I think there are over 20, maybe two dozen solution videos. It's an incredible number. Thank you so much to those puzzle authors. Um, and well, I've just noticed something very interesting about today's puzzle. We'll get to that in a moment. What else is there going on apart from Patreon? Um, and the new the new patron reward will be up in four days. Joseph Namer's incredible equal sum lines pack. It's so good. I literally can't tell you. Um, brilliant stuff. So do join us on Patreon. The the extra content there is amazing. I'm not going to deny you need a little bit of time each month to try the puzzles. And we put out so many um, videos that that might be difficult. But anyway. Uh, they are there. They are brilliant. It is worth trying and you become a better Sudoku player if you try them. I'll say that. Uh, now, what else? There's our, right, there are all of our apps, one of which is a killer Sudoku app. So it contains puzzles that look a bit like this. Actually, this does remind me of a couple of Sam Kappelman lines puzzles in that pack. Um, yeah. Definitely has overtones of those, but I'm, I've no doubt. It also actually reminds me of a very interesting puzzle we have coming out in a future release that I've been testing. Yeah, interesting. I mean, yeah, puzzles do remind one of other puzzles, but, and we've certainly done Pulverizing Pancake on the channel before, although I don't particularly know that this puzzle reminds me of any previous Pulverizing Pancake puzzle, but uh, it's a great name, isn't it? Pulverizing Pancake. Love it. In fact, this is almost certainly the biggest, um, the biggest ratio between the length of the title of the puzzle and the length of the author's pseudonym that we've ever featured. The puzzle is called Little R by Pulverizing Pancake. Um, anyway, I was going through what else there is, um, the apps and the merchandise and Sven Sudoku pad, etc, etc, all on the links under the video, Patreon and Discord too. But the first link is to this puzzle. And what I've just noticed is that the cages, well, they not only share the same shape, they contain each of the digits for, or each of the numbers from 6 to 18 once each and a 5 as a given. That's brilliant. I mean, what? How do people come up with these ideas, let alone execute them? It is amazing. Amazing stuff. I mean, I'm really entertained just by the look of the puzzle. Uh, this was recommended to us last week and uh, by not by the author, by somebody else. And we're certainly grateful for recommendations from, from people we know recognize good puzzles because that is... <laughs> What what else is there but a recommend? You know what else can go wrong? Oh, well, my solve can go wrong. We know that. Anyway, do have a go at this killer Sudoku. The rules are very simple. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply, and in cages, digits can't repeat and sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. Of course, normal killer rules, basically. Um, I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. And well. Okay, I mean, given that we know that all of these numbers between 6 and 18 are represented as totals, a three-digit cage with 6 is the place to start. We get a 1, 2, 3 in that cage. Ah, and a 7 cage has to be 1, 2, 4. But this cell can't be 1 or 2 because they're already in this box somewhere. So that is a very nice start for us. We get to place a 4 straight away. One and two, and they'll be different. Ah, oh, this eight cage. Okay, the eight cage is going to need a one in it as well, because three different numbers making up eight have to be 
125 or 134 in Sudoku. Now both of those are possible at the moment, but they both use a 1 and the 7 cage has used a 1 as well. So between those cells we're going to have used up two 1s in column 3 and 4. Now each of those columns obviously only has one 1 in it. That sounds very weird, one 1 in it. Anyway, um, and therefore this cell and indeed many other cells in these columns all of those, I would say, cannot contain a 1. It's, it's a sort of X-wing. There's a 1 in those cells and a 1 in those cells. That uses up the 1s in columns 3 and 4, and there isn't one there. Now, actually, what can go in the 8 cage? Right, I said it's either 1, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 5, but look what happens if it's 1, 3, 4. We would have to put the 4 here because of the, the 4 that we've placed then this would be a 1, 3, and that would give us four cells that all had to be from the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And that is, frankly, a complete physical impossibility. So, it's not a 1, 3, 4 cage, it's a 1, 2, 5 cage. And what does, that immediately gives us that this is a 1, 2, 5 triple, so that's a 3. This is lovely. Uh, there's no three there. That's now a one, two pair. Now in this one, two, five triple, the five is in one of these two cells and therefore in the cage, it can't be here. And now we've got a one, two pair in column four. Uh, let's keep going up these cages in ascending order. Six, seven, eight. Let's look at nine. Yes, this is beautiful. We've used up one, two and five in the box. Now what can these digits be in the nine cage? The, the lowest numbers they can be are 3 and 4. Um, and there's only one degree of freedom then, because that would have to be a 2 if they were 3 and 4. So you could reduce this to a 1, but then you'd have to put this up to 3 and 5, and that won't work because we've used up 5. So it is 3 and 4. That's a 2. Now, if you've done as much killer Sudoku as I have, or as you have probably, you may know that a three cell cage with an 11 in it must have either or both a one or a one or a two in it. Well, we know this one doesn't have a two because of where we've put that two. So it does have a one and it can't be in this cell because there's a one, two pair looking at that cell. So one of these is a one and it's not one, two, eight because of that. And I don't know what it is. Um, Okay, maybe I'm going to go out of order. Rather than looking at the 10 cage, let's look here. This, the digits remaining in column 3 are 6, 7, 8, and 9. Yes, that's good. So these two add up to at least 13. But this can't be 1 or 2 because of that pair. 13 needs a, a complement here of 4 or less. So that has to be 3 or 4. Now this is either adding up to 13 or 14, so it's either 6, 7 or 6, 8. It's definitely got a 6 in and definitely no 9. So, oh, that's beautiful. This, that is gorgeous. The, the ways of making up 11 with a 1 obviously require the other two digits to add up to 10. We knew they couldn't be 2, 8. Now we know, we knew they couldn't be 1, 9 because that would repeat a 1. Now we know they can't be 6, 4. So it must be a 137 cage, uh, with the 1 not being there. And therefore, none of these are a 7. And this is now a 6-8 pair. That adds up to 14. This is a 3. And the, this is now a 9 down here. And that's a 7 at the top. And we're away again. Oh, and now we can move on to the 10 cage. So we just nipped in, had a look at the 17 cage en route. Oh, and the 11 before we got to the 10. Oh, I've just noticed this is a 4-5 pair we can fill in, thanks to the given. That's handy. Anyway, now I'm going here. These two cells, the minimum they can be, not using 1, 2, and 3, which have been used in the column, is 4-5. That's also, therefore, the maximum they can be. And we get a 1 here. That fixes this as a 2. And I don't know, this is so clever. And yet we're sort of racing through it. I feel like um, Simon once described breaking a puzzle as kind of like, or no, he did a puzzle in the wrong way on that occasion. He described it as 
like desecrating, drawing all over the Mona Lisa. I'm not calling this puzzle a Mona Lisa yet, but it does feel if you race through it, you're kind of messing up the beauty of the construction. But let's just honour it as we go. That's the thing to do. Now, onto the 12 cage, which can't have one, two, four, or five in these cells. So I think they've got to have a three. If they didn't, they'd have to be at least six, seven, and that breaks it. So there's definitely a three. Now, they can't then have a six, or we'd need another three in the cage here, which is illegal. So they're either three, seven, or three, eight. If they were three, eight, that would be a one, and that can't be a one for lots of reasons. So that's a three, seven pair, and this is a two. And we just keep cycling through these cages and coming up with stuff. So the 13 cage next, surely. Mm. Oh, okay, it's not so easy. These digits have to be at least three, four. So the most this can be is six. That's not as helpful as what we've had so far. Okay, so maybe maybe I got a little ahead of myself. Let's just fill in the rest in this column are six, seven, eight, and nine in some order. It might be useful. Um Ah, these two can't be one, two, three, or four. Oh, that's interesting. This can't be one, two, or three. Right. So the minimum these can be is five and six, which adds up to 11. The minimum this can be is four. So we're already up to 15. There's only one degree of freedom. So we've got to push one of those numbers up one. We can't push four and five up without repeating a number. So it must be a four, five, seven cage. And the four goes here because of the three, four pair, looking at this row. And that's a five, seven pair. So these cells don't have a seven in. Now, can we do the 13 cage? Does it have to have a three in this side? No. No, actually, quite the opposite. It's definitely got a four in by Sudoku. There's a four up there and a four here. So there's definitely a four in this 13 cage. Oops. <laughs> A four, so that's not a four. Now, how are we going to make up the total? Well, what else can we put in here? We could put a five in here, but that doesn't work. You'd need another four. Oh, we couldn't have a five anyway. That's nonsense. Four, six with a three here. Or four, three with a six here, actually. Both of those are still possible. I think this has to be a three, four, six cage. Given what this is now constrained to, I don't see it can be anything else. It is. It's a three, four, six gauge. That is not a five. The four is in one of those cells. Hmm. I don't quite know how to resolve that. Okay. Ah, getting a bit stuck. Ah, oh, that five, seven gauge is looking at this two, five pair. That doesn't do anything for us. We've got a six, eight, nine still to go in that box. Six, seven, eight, nine in this one. I'm gonna do some pencil marking. It can't stop me. Ah, look, look at this one, two pair of pairs in columns four and five. So where do the one and two go in column six? This is gorgeous. They must go in these three cells. And we know they can't both go in the 18 cage because we're not allowed to write a 15 into this cell. So one of these is one or two. That's going to have a serious effect on the 18 cage. The other one or two is sitting here. Now, if there's a one in this, it's 198. And if there's a two, it's 197. Sorry, that's absolutely ridiculous talking. If there's a one in it, it's 198. If there's a two, it's 297. So there's definitely a nine in the cage. And then it's either 1, 8 or 2, 7. Now, these cells can't be a 2 because of that. One of these is a 1 or a 2. I'm a bit confused. I'm not sure I can finish this off. Thought I was going to be able to, but apparently not. Hmm, okay. So, I don't think we've got enough going to do this 14 cage yet. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bogged down. Well, do, well done, pulverizing pancake, for starting the pulverizing at this point. Um, oh, look, that four is fixing three and four. A bit of ordinary Sudoku. That makes this a seven. That might be actually 
useful given what we were just trying to look at. Let me just tidy up the pencil marks a bit. Now, seven looking across here says that's not a seven. Now, this is either one nine eight or two nine seven. Uh, that's not seven either, but maybe that doesn't still. Oh, look, I can put five in this box. How weird. I didn't notice that. In it goes. Three, four, five. That fixes seven and five. That fixes seven and three. Ooh, now this can't be a seven. So if this is two, nine, seven, it's seven there, nine, two. If it's one, nine, eight, I can see a one, six, eight, nine quad then. But I don't see a problem with it. These others are, oh, these are six, eight, nine for the column. And that gives us a six, eight, nine triple in the middle box. That's brilliant. Okay, so this is now a three, four pair. And that is a six. What does the three, four pair do? It does nothing here. So I could have just looked down this column and found the three, four pair if I'd noticed. Didn't do it. Typical. Um, right, but six rules six out of those cells. Eight. Right, we're going to have to move on to this 14k, I suppose. Um, and it doesn't have a 6 or a 5 in it. So it has one number that's bigger than those, and two numbers that are smaller. No, don't, don't, no, don't be silly. Don't do it that way. Look, we've got a, a naked triple here, or rather, we know where 6 goes in this row. That's the simple thing to do. We can put a 6 in there. That place is six in this box as well, actually, um, down in box eight. Uh, I don't know what that does. It stops this being a six as that did now. We've got a one, eight, nine triple here. So this can't be eight and nine because that adds up to 17. So there's a one in this cage and not here. Uh, this is either one, eight, six, which it can be, or one, nine, five, which it can't be. So it's one, eight, six which it must be. Different auxiliary verbs for every phrase there. Now we can't have an eight up here. That's become a nine. This is now, a th there's a one being used here. So this is a three, two pair. Oh, we are cooking with gas now. Uh, let's try and get that right. Um, three, two, four, one, five. That's, that's a naked seven. Well, it's the yeah, I mean, it sees every other possible cell. One, five, two, three, four, six, nine, and an eight in there. So that is a seven. That places seven in box four. This is a four, five pair. Actually, we know which way around they go, thanks to that lovely given in the corner that is maintaining its religion throughout. Um, now, this can't be a nine because of that nine. Ah. This can't be a 1, 7 pair, or we'd need a 10 here. So the one that can avoid being a 1 or a 7 is this one. That's a 9. Oh, well, we always knew there was going to be a 9 in the cell. Oh, but we have to put 1 and 2 down in these three cells. So that's a 1, 2 pair. This has to be high. That's a 7. I think we've filled all the cage. Well, we have one that's I write this digit in. It's now a 2 to make 18. We've filled all the cages with their candidates. We just need to sort out some of them. In fact, these bottom cells, the bottom rows, are actually extremely helpful. One to finish that one. Eight, one there. This is a three, four, nine triple that I can't resolve. Um, have we got enough to resolve box three? I mean, I suppose we do. It's a lovely puzzle. I mean, it's not at all difficult, but it is just great fun working through it. You kind of get to look into the the constructor's mind, I think, when you follow this sort of linear path through a puzzle, it, especially if you do it relatively quickly. That's my view. Uh, it may sound like madness, but that's what you get from me. Now, these two cells, they're a lovely naked pair. One, four, seven, eight, and five in the column. Two, three in both rows. 
So that's a 6-9 pair, which is nice. That gives us a 3 here. That sorts out, oops, that sorts out the whole 3-4-9 triple. This is a 2 at the top in the corner. We did get a 3 in the corner, losing its religion down here. How, how jolly and REM styly. Um, now, 2-6-9 there. Oh, look, this must be a naked pair as well. It sees 1, 4, 2, 3, 7 in the row and 6, 9 in the box. So actually, it's a pair of naked singles, naughty things. A 5, 8 pair, 6, 9, 2. We've got a 1 to go here. A th this is a naked 3. It sees every other possible cell. This is a 4, 7 pair, which we'll get to resolve in a second, I believe. I'm using a second metaphorically there. This 2-3 pair has been done. This 2-8 pair has been done. Uh, yes, that 8 has sorted out the 9-8 in the middle. That gets us going here. Can't do that 6-9 still. But look, now I've got a 6-9 pair in the column as well. So that's a 5-8 pair. This is 6 or 9, and I don't know which it is. That's weird. There must be something. Yes, Sudoku. 7 is looking at that cell. So 4, 7, 4, 5, 8, 5. All these pairs are unwinding in sequential order. The 9 there is looking at that cell. That's the 6 that gets us finished off, I think. 8, 9, 6, 9, 6, 9, and 6, 9 again. 6, 9 have been pairs everywhere. And there we go. That is the solution to R by Pulverizing Pancake. A lovely puzzle. Not too difficult. In fact, the, the recommender said this was quite good if you've had a run of hard puzzles. And the last two puzzles have been quite tough because because of the error I made a couple of days ago, and then yesterday's was pretty difficult. Um, so good fun today. I I, miss, I love that one. That's really nice. Thank you for recommending it. Thank you to Pulverizing Pancake for creating it. Um, hope you got to enjoy it as a solver as well as I did. And really look forward to seeing you on the channel again soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.